expecting anybody else, nor are we uh, at capacity. Not that I heard of, but. No. Bob All right, coming. good. Let's kick off and see where we end up. You're good. Right. Go ahead. Announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and that it is being <coughs> conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4 6 at SEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. So all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Guard, you call a roll, please. Mr. Berkowitz? Here. Mr. Joskowitz? Here. Mr. Kaplan? Here. Mr. Prasad? Here. Mr. Reddy? Present. Mr. Shaw? Present. Mr. Willens? Here. And we have with us tonight Mr. Herniak? I am here. Mr. Chadwick? Present. Mr. Holloway? Here. All right. Is there anybody who has any business before this board that's not on tonight's agenda? I see none. And close that portion of the meeting. Uh, correspondence we have. <coughs> okay, we have a sense right Well, I have it attached yeah. to this. Really, really. No, I'm sorry, I, I left it with Nancy. So because we have, I thought we, she was actually, going we have to two chair. correspondence, right? Yes, we have two. Okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, let's see. For Mr. Garofalo, we have a letter. On this Neil Patel. He's asking for a 90 day extension on the uh, use variance that we granted in September of 2017. It's taken longer than anticipated to deal with the existing tenants arrange financing and finalize the interior layout and other architectural plans. Anybody have any objection to granting a 90-day extension? Have a motion, please. Moved. Second, ready. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So without further notice, right, Chairman? It's, well, it's, it's just an extension of an existing okay, resolution. I'm sorry. So. Yep. Sorry. Okay. No, uh, and then we also have a letter uh, on the uh, notice of violation hearing involving uh, uh, the yeah, case number 18 colon 49 Stanley Posthumus he didn't put that in his race that's why I yep. hesitated yep. Yep. Uh, as you know this firm represents applicant Stanley Posthumus the owner of the home located at 798 Lakeshore uh, drive, Block 345, Lot 5, in connection with the appeal of the notice of violation, dated August 6, 2018, issued by the Township Chief's Enforce Chief Enforcement Officer. The appeal in this matter is scheduled for a second hearing before the Zoning Board on January 23, 2019. Please be advised that Mr. Posthumus hereby withdraws his appeal the notice of violation because the alleged violations set forth have been resolved. There will be any action we have to take. Just make note of that. So any of you here for that case? Yeah. We're All right, so the case has been withdrawn because apparently he's fixed whatever he had to fix and the violations have been cured. So we're not going to be hearing that case. Has the town confirmed that or are you just going by the word? Were we supposed to get the something? Town, the, the town has confirmed it. The code enforcement officer went out there and it's been confirmed. Oh, They've removed good. pretty much everything out of the basement. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all for coming. Uh, we have resolutions. If somebody could like make one motion, we could accept all the resolutions. Uh, 
Just name the numbers. Yeah. You want, to make, you want to do? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we accept uh, three resolutions put before us. Uh, application number 1852, uh, a C variance to construct an eight foot by eight foot shed. Uh, application 1855, uh, a C variance to install a generator in front yard. And uh, application 1826, uh, a C variance to uh, construct an eight foot by 12 foot shed and a six foot fence with see through top uh, legalized patio. And would you also include uh, 1861? Oh, okay. Eight, eight, 1861? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And application 1861, uh, C variance to install a six foot high fence, four foot solid with two foot lattice in the front yard. So moved. Any second? <coughs> Somebody second? No. Ready to second it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I noticed that one of the commissioners is not able to vote on 1861. So we may not be able to do this via acclamation. We may need to do the three separate and then the fourth one individually for purposes yeah. of voting. Oh. I guess we could do it that way. Mr. Okay. Mr. Kaplan is not shown as someone who can vote on 61. Okay. Correct? That's correct. No, last week on yeah. that. So do I vote no tonight, or do I just not vote? Yeah. And it was all, all close three, and then this one separate. Okay. He was. Why wouldn't he be on here? He voted no. Was that why he wouldn't be listed as correct. eligible to vote? That's correct. Huh. Okay. Yeah. So we, if we could just have that motion amended for uh, 52, 55, and 26. Move to amend. Second, ready. Call roll, please. Mr. Berkowitz? Yes. Mr. Doskowitz? I can't vote. Oh, sorry. Uh, Mr. Prasad? Yes. Mr. Reddy? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Willens? Yes. That's it. Mr. Kaplan can vote on those. That's correct. I should, yeah. I should vote on that one. So I vote yes. Yeah. Yeah, you can vote on those. Right. Those he can. Those three I can vote on. Right, that's the right. next one I can't. And then if somebody could move the next one individually, please. Mr. Chairman, I move the application uh, approval for application number 1862. 61. Granting, I mean 61, that's the one we can vote on. Uh, granting the sea branch to install a six foot high fence, four foot solid with two foot lattice in the front yard. Second, Eddie. Roll Mr. Berkowitz. Pull the roll, please. Uh, yes, here. Mr. Prasad? Yes. Mr. I am Reddy? here and I'm yes. also voting yes. Mr. Willen? Yes. Very good. <coughs> All right, the first case on the agenda is uh, Swati Desai. You come forward, please. <coughs> Will both of you be presenting, or yeah, if, both of you, if both of you could raise your right hand, please? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. If you could please state and spell your names for the record. People decide. Swati decide. Okay. And if you could just spell those, please, for the record. V I P U L, first name, last name D E S A I. Swati S W A T I, and last name decide D E S A I. Great, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Floor is yours. Sit down. All right, Mr. Desai, why don't you tell me what it is you want to do and why? So we really should do uh, building a, a deck, uh, 16 by 35. Uh, we have extended family. We have brother, sister. My parents live in the same town. And my kids is graduating this year. So we want to have some sort of family event to build a deck, uh, 16 by 35. And with that, we want to build uh, uh, a walkway from the front yard to the deck and then build a shed to store like uh, our lawnmower or like a snowblower like that. Okay. Mm. We have a odd shaped lot here, obviously. We've got three Two streets, streets on three sides. Yes, yeah. yeah. street going to the tree front then, yard on that. Then the Pazubrook Road side is a landscaped area. All those homes back onto Pazubrook Road. 
they have that landscape area down there. You have a corner lot? Yeah, corner lot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's two front yards. It's like it's, 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 more Two front front yards and a little three, 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 three front yards. Three front yards. Three, three front yards. Yard. Kind of become a smaller lot on <laughs> What is the fence you're proposing? Uh, fence I would like to do like uh, a slotty fence, uh, five foot. But I mean, if I need to do like two feet deep, I can do that. It's not going to block any way because I live on the entrance side and the other side is exit, so it's not going to make anybody like kind of make a left turn or anything like that. So it'll have like more privacy when uh, kids get together and things like that. Is there any landscaping along the road? Uh, yes, there's a, a landscaping in between the divider. So How about Raven Boulevard? How, uh, what kind of landscaping is along there? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's on like there's a middle divider, so on one side you entrance and the other side of the landscaping you exit the Mazar Brook. How about on your property? Uh, mm -hmm. My property there's a wall there and behind that is all like a uh, town. Build, From the uh, side of your house to the edge of the road, is that just grass? This is grass. This is plain grass, and the slope goes down the hill on that. It's about like three feet uh, slope. And in the backyard, you're proposing a shed in the far left-hand corner. Yes, on the left-hand corner. Uh, that's very close to the property line. One of the issues, right? My neighbor is not concerned because he has an eight-foot fence and other like an eight-foot fence. Sorry. No, because he raised something as a fence, a six-foot. But from my lot, is about two-foot uh, padding he has on that. And then there is another like 15-foot uh, uh, tree, so it's not going to block any view on that side. So with that uh, location of the shed, I can use much of the backyard so kids can come and play if they want to use yard on that. Apparently, he has no objection. Yeah, no objection. Any other board members have any questions? And you have the same constraint to do the walkway from the front yeah, just keep it wide and go across. And so the people that live in the house on lot 14 are uh, no, 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 no problem. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody in the public have any questions for these uh, witnesses, applicants? Anybody have any statements they want to make in favor of or opposed to this application? See none for the record. Anything else you want to say? No. Nope. Nope. Anybody want to make a recommendation? Sure, you might want to clarify. He, he, his proposal is for a five-foot fence, but 50% open. Normally, we have uh, uh, solid fences, and then we get into discussion of the height. So 50% open is a little different proposal. What do you mean by 50% open? No, it's a seat to like, you know, like I have seen my neighbor has like a two-level fence. So they have like the four feet, or like they have three feet of solid, and then top. Lattice. Oh, so you mean the the you that yeah. the, the top, top is see through. Yeah. Top, yeah. Top. So the lattice. The lattice on that. So. Not not uh, not, not on the floor. So it's slats. not fifty percent open. No. It's four feet solid. One. Yeah. One, one foot of right. lattice. Lattice is twenty percent. Yeah. Yeah, it is four and one. Oh, four and one. Yeah. I don't know anything else to say. It just didn't sound. Want me to do one? Yeah. Uh, being that this is de minimis in nature, we have nobody objecting, and uh, it's for family use and enjoyment, I will be voting in favor of. Somebody want to propose a resolution? Yes. <coughs> Application 18, colon 57, Swati Deshai, 90 Erika Way, Block 734.04, <coughs> Lot 15, Zone APRD dash two to issue or grant a C variance to construct an open deck with stairs, shed, install a walk and fence contrary to section four thirty dash thirty five column four, section four thirty dash ten C, section four thirty dash eleven A. Second Jaskowitz. Cool roll please. Mr. Berko Berkowitz? Yes. Mr. Joskowitz? Yes. Mr. Kaplan? Yes. Mr. Passad? Yes. Mr. Reddy? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Willen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, the application has been granted at the next meeting. I'm not sure what it is. Is it the 6th? The meeting next week, special meeting, would we be well, doing it yeah, then? I don't think I have a resolution. If, if it's that. ready in time, but I'll mail the resolution yeah. out to you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Application 1858, uh, Subash Patel. <laughs> 6C variance to construct an addition and an open deck expansion. Council, claim your appearance, please. Yes, Joseph O'Neill of Garofalo O'Neill Ruggiero for the applicant, which Good. is my immediate right. Good evening, the applicant is? Mr. Subash Patel. Thank you. This is a uh, application, as you uh, said, Mr. Chairman, for a C variance. Uh, it's for uh, building coverage. The existing is 13.38 percent. 15 percent is allowed. We're at 16.12 percent. That's because of a uh, proposed addition consisting of a 410 foot and square foot and change uh, sunroom and other addition on the back. And he's linking up an existing deck with a pre existing deck. So that's where we're getting the additional building coverage. With me is Mr. Patel. I'd like to have him sworn, if that's all right. Mr. Patel, if you could please stand up and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. And your name is Subash Patel? Subash Patel. Thank you, Mr. Patel. You have a seat. Counsel. Go ahead, Mr. Patel. Thank you. Mr. Patel, uh, you heard my brief description. That is accurate? Yes. What you're doing? Yes. You've been a resident of the community for how long? 30 years. And how long have you been in the house? 20 years. Uh, you have your uh, family, you uh, brought up your kids, raised your kids there in that house? Yes. And now your family is expanding, isn't that right? Yes. You got a happy uh, wedding coming up that you need to get this approval done for? Yes, in, in July it's coming up. And the happy couple's moving in with you? Yes. So you're under some time pressure here. So much. Uh, in addition, in addition to other <laughs> pressures, <laughs> everyone's <laughs> everyone's <laughs> <having>. <laughs> <laughs> Patel's on his hot chair right now. So, <laughs> so part of this is you're expanding the downstairs. You're adding a sunroom in the back. Yes. And you're also expanding inside the uh, the kitchen. Yes. And uh, two of the bedrooms you're expanding. Yes. And that's all to accommodate your growing and hopefully continuing to grow fast. Right? Yes. Now the. Uh, the deck in the back is, as I said, being expanded to link from the existing deck to the new proposed summer. Yes. And you have uh, fencing on one side with one neighbor. Yes. And on the other side is a uh, well-established tree line. Yes. For cover. Mm -hmm. And behind you is the apartments. Yes. Where your fence and shrubs are. Yes. So you feel uh, this is in keeping with the neighborhood? Yes. Other neighbors have been doing expansions and improvements to their homes? Yes. I have no further questions. Any members of the board have any questions? Mr. Chad? Which way does your property slope? Does it slope towards the street or does it slope towards the apartment? What? Towards the apartment. So it drops back towards the yes. apartment. What's, what's, when you get past your property, I don't know exactly where it is. Apartment. Is that grass back there or is that a parking lot? Um, Grass and a park. Grass and a park. Okay, so it goes that way. Anybody else? Anything? Any members of the public have any questions? Any members of the public have, wish to speak in opposition or in favor of this application? We see none. Mr. So O'Neill? Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess that's your case. Relatively, if that is the case, it is, we feel, a very de minimis uh, variance that we're asking for in connection with this very happy reason that we're asking. Somebody, Somebody want to make a recommendation? Or I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> would somebody like to make a recommendation? Yeah, I'm. I would like. I would. Uh, I'm in favor of this application. I, it is uh, the minimum request, and uh, for the basically family need and uh, especially wedding something coming on. So I'm in favor of this. Somebody want to make a resolution? Sure. Uh, go ahead, Dave. All right. Um, an application 1858 Subhash Patel, 13 Queen Street, Block 410, Lot 4 in the R3 zone. I recommend that we grant the C variance to construct an addition and open deck expansion, contrary to Section 430-35, Column 10. Second ready. Roll roll. Mr. 
Mr. Berkowitz? Yes. Mr. Joskowitz? Yes. Mr. Kaplan? Yes. Mr. Passad? Yes. Mr. Reddy? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Willing? Yes. Do you need your plans back? Thank you. Is there your plans back? You need any copies, more copies of your plans? Because we're just going to throw them away. Oh, we got plenty. Thank you. <laughs> you want my copy? You want? Oh, you can have <laughs> as many as you like, but I just really You can give to your kids. Ah, ah. <laughs> Wedding favors. <laughs> there you go. Okay, next uh, on the agenda is uh, 18 colon 53 by Jess Papalia. C variants to construct a one story addition, second story addition over a proposed patio and garage, balcony, stairs, driveway expansion, and a patio. Who will be presenting? Just you, sir. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. <coughs> and your name? And if you could please spell it for the record. Mr. Propali, I'm going to ask you to speak just a little bit louder for the benefit the of this. Why? the microphone there. You can even better. Have a seat and uh, please lean into the microphone, Mr. Chairman. All right. Ms. Papaya, why don't you explain to us what you want to do and why? And okay, well, yeah, I'm just heading uh, uh, back to the mic, the house. please. You're gonna have to. Yeah, you have to get closer to that microphone. Thank so you. We can all hear you. All right, hey. I'm heading uh, back of the house, uh, um, garage, and uh, <clears throat> two-story extension, basically, to the existing house. So there will be two extra bedrooms in the back, and uh, garage, and open deck. How many bedrooms do you have there now? Uh, we have a five, but uh, family is big. So I have uh, three kids, my parents, and originally when we built the house, uh, we left a lot of space in the hallway and unnecessary. So uh, the bedroom that we have is not big. So kids are growing up now and uh, they want a bigger room. So originally we thought older one will move out to college and you know <coughs> next one will take that room, but that doesn't happen. So. You know, the older one is still back, and uh, you know, uh, there's a need for additional uh, guest bedroom and uh, one extra bedroom. So, okay. so you're gonna have a total of how many bedrooms? Uh, so five we have currently, and then two more will be seven. So seven. Yes. Okay, and that's gonna accommodate your current family plus uh, my parents. Your parents yes. they're not living with you now they live with me right now but the kids are growing up so the kids don't have a big size bedroom uh, the smallest bedroom that I have is 8 by 10 and uh, there has no bathroom it's just a bedroom so that girl is, uh, my daughter is constantly complaining and uh, so uh, there's a lot of space the house is big but a lot of space is wasted in a hallway and everything when we designed it originally we didn't uh, you know, design it wisely. So right now the bedroom is disordered. Anybody else have any questions for the applicant? All right, just want to make sure I understand that you're looking for uh, another five or six percent impervious coverage. So the addition is required. You say you have a lot of unused space in the current house, but rather than redoing that, you're putting an addition onto the house. Yeah, so um, I have my architect with me. I brought him in to redesign inside, but it's very hard because of the, uh, the radiant heat, uh, the way the house la is laid out. Uh, it's not efficient to change interior unless I add something. So uh, we just came up with a current deck on top of the deck. Uh, we will just add two extra bedroom. And still we can go through from the current existing house so the kids, one uh, bedroom will be used by my daughter and the other one will be used by a guest uh, here and there. You know, kids are growing up, so their friends come over, sleep over. And so, you, so you're putting bedrooms on top of the existing deck? Yes. Which part of the driveway is being expanded? By the same size where the deck is. You're pushing it further back? Yes. <coughs> so I can take the car in. You know, the driver gives me extended car goes in the, the basement level. You're adding a garage? Yes. So the basement level will be the garage, and on top will be the deck, and then the second floor will be two bedrooms. 
So uh -huh. what, like, go ahead. what I'm what I'm hoping we can do is knock down that impervious coverage overage that you have. You're you're already over one percent, no big deal. You're allowed twenty percent, you're going for almost twenty seven percent. I'm I'm trying to look for a way to just chip away at that a little bit. Either with the uh, patio or the driveway. <coughs> Yeah, we can do with the driveway. You have room to give on the driveway? Yes. Where would you give that room? Uh, the one that is... Uh, Just don't extend it. Uh, extended, but extended less. What's the purpose of the extension? Just to cars park out the back of it? Yeah, so car can go in the lower level. Are there any drainage issues currently? No. <coughs> the house is a slope. Well, away how much can you take back? So that Mr. Kaplan can understand. Are you going to reduce it by? It looks like you're extending it 29 feet. Well, so 29 feet 10 inch. Yeah. So we made it so the car can back in and turn, right. but we can take uh, you know give back five feet. You know, steel car will be able to make a turn. Five feet of foot. Of 28. 30. Well, no, 30. It, 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 you don't have a width on here, but they look, it looks like almost a square. So yeah, it is if like If you take square. five feet off, it's five times 30, 150 square feet, which is what? We've got a calculator. That's. Well, you want to see 40,000 foot lot, so. No, they got a, they got a big lot. They're almost an eight. Well, yeah, 40,000. 40, 40,500. 40,500, yeah. So, 150 of that would be, it's about one and a half percent. Yeah. So it comes down a little bit. Comes down about 25%. Just looking to yeah, do no, what we can. Right. If that helps, then, then I'm happy. Comes down to about 25%. Okay. Or we can take the, uh, there's a walkway that goes uh, the step in the back uh, for the patio. As it curves the corner there, turns the corner of the house. Uh, Is that what you're talking about? Uh, this, the, you're going to need that. Yeah. I, I just reduced the pavement going out the back by 150 square feet. And that'll get you down. I'm, I'm okay with that. Mr. Propel, you agree? Yes. You're going to reduce it then 150 square feet. Basically, it's going to extend instead of 29 feet 10 inches, it's going to extend 24 feet 10 inches. 20 cars will you anticipate having parked outside here then? Seven cars at the, the, the peak? Uh, oh, five cars. Five cars. Okay. Uh, you'd like to try and get them into the back, not <coughs> along the driveway, or you want to park along the driveway as well? Uh, they'll be in the back. Uh, okay. Right now, the problem is when, if the one car is parked on the driveway, then it's very hard to take the back up. Yeah, understand. Or go, there's a tiny space. So you're widening that a bit. Right? <laughs> so I'd rather space. take everybody in the back and then. Anybody else have any other comments? Any members of the public wish to ask any questions of the applicant? Any members of the public wish to speak in favor or against the application? Nobody shows up. Uh, all right, so you agree with the reduction in the driveway? Yes. 150 square feet. And the rest of the application is pretty much as it stands. Somebody want to? I think you just do a statement too. And just for the record, make a statement in favor of the application. And yeah, I'll make a statement. The minimus in nature and the applicant is willing to adjust uh, the driveway down to 150 feet, so I will be uh, 150 square feet. I'll be voting uh, in favor. All right. Somebody want to propose a resolution? 
Mitchell in application 18, colon 53, Rajesh Bipala, 15 Phillips Drive, block 75, block 53, dot 03, uh, zone R2. I recommend we grant the C variance construct a one story addition, second story addition over a proposed patio garage, balcony stairs, driveway expansion, and patio contrary to section 430 35, column 10 and 13. Second. Second, Daddy. Call the roll, please. Mr. Berkowitz? Yes. Mr. Joskowitz? Yes. Mr. Kaplan? Yes. Mr. Prasad? Yes. Mr. Reddy? Yes. Mr. Shaw? Yes. Mr. Willens? Yep. All right, so applications are granted. We'll vote formally on the resolution probably in our first February meeting. You'll get a copy from Nora and then you'll be able to apply for your permit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Prelly. Okay. Next is KNS Real Estate. Uh, C and D variance, final major site plan, soil removal plan. Not looking here. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Joseph O'Neill, Gary Paula and O'Neill, here on behalf of KNS Real Estate Investments LLC. This is for a uh, new building, a combination of lots. Uh, on North Beverwick Road. This is going to be a new commercial uh, building with residential above. So I have a number of witnesses with me this evening. I'd like to start off with Mr. Candillo. And Mr. Candillo is a representative of the applicant? No, he is our engineer. He is your engineer. Mr. Candillo, if you could please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. You can adjust that upward if you'd like. <laughs> and if you could please spell your name first and last for the record. Uh, last, uh, first name Adam, last name Candil, K-A-N-D-I-L. Counsel, do you want to void your, your expert regarding his qualifications? Mr. Candil, would you give us please the benefit of your experience? Uh, yeah, I'm a licensed uh, civil engineer. I've uh, been in the industry for the last um, 17 years. Um, I'm licensed in both New York and New Jersey, and I've testified in, uh, in front of several boards in, in Morris County, Somerset, and New Jersey, throughout New Jersey. I would offer Mr. Kendeal as an expert for engineering. Any objections from members of the board? No. Thank you, Mr. Kendeal. Referring to the uh, plans that we've provided, we walk us around the uh, existing conditions and then what it is we're proposing. Yeah, certainly. Has, uh, uh, has this been included in the packet? Yeah, that is uh, plan sheet number three inside the package that the board should have a copy of. Okay. And that um, hasn't been adjusted in any way? Has not been adjusted. What the board members have. Correct. That's okay. revision one, which uh, should have addressed most of the board professional comments. Um, you know, uh, for the most part, um, the intent was to address all the comments from the board professional, the planner, the engineer. Uh, tax assessor and parks enforcer. Maybe you could just give a date on that sheet. Yeah, certainly. So the um, the date of this sheet is uh, 8 24 2018. Revision 1, last revised, uh, 12 18 2018. Yep, and the exhibit here, uh, shown here, is the um, the site plan. Uh, so just to walk through it, um, I think everybody has a copy of the existing conditions. Um, so the existing use on the site is um, it's currently now office uh, building. It's a two-story office building, um, and it's approximately th uh, 3,600 square feet. The footprint is about 1,800 square feet, uh, two stories with a basement. Um, and there's also a, a garage as well as a storage shed on the site. Um, and the proposed use that we are looking to propose on the site is a mixed use uh, commercial and residential. So the first floor would be commercial use with a footprint of 4,284 square feet, with the second floor being residential units, five residential units, uh, with a cellar uh, that will be used for storage. Um, the, current, the current plans. Um, well, the, the zone of the well, site is 9 North Beverwick Road, uh, block 611, lot 8 and 9. Um, the um, plan is that 
you know, upon approval, there will be a lot consolidation as per the recommendation of the tax assessor. Uh, the site is in the B5 zone. Um, the use, um, which we'll get into later, our planner will discuss further, but it, a commercial zone is an, a, a primary, uh, a primary uh, accepted use, and also the residential component as a mixed use, as long as it's less than 50% of the floor plan is um, also an, uh, an accessory use. Uh, it could be a conditional use. Um, however, we're hearing from this board because of the determination whether it is accessory or not, um, the re residential or not. So that I'll leave. It complies with those regulations that you just That is correct. It, it does comply with all of the conditions to be a conditional use. Um, and we'll leave that to our planner to discuss uh, it being an accessory use. Now let's talk about the uh, proposed site. How many parking spaces are we proposing? This We're proposing 19 parking spaces. Um, all, all conforming 9 by 18 parking spaces um, and the um, the access aisle is a uh, conforming 24 foot um, access aisle um, that's correct so um, we we're acknowledging the 15 foot buffer um, you know, uh, under existing conditions, you'll see in the back there was a shed and a garage that was within uh, three feet of the property line, the rear property line. So we're actually moving that forward. Um, and the closest thing we have there would be, with the exception of the fence, which under existing conditions is right up on the property line. Our proposed fence is uh, five inches off the property line. And the closest, um, the closest structure to the property line or, or, or area within the um, the residential setback is uh, the two parking spaces. So you have the two parking spaces and you have the trash enclosure which are within that 15 foot uh, rear setback, which it also coincides with the, um, the residential buffer. Uh, there's an on-site uh, section uh, trash enclosure that will be hauled off uh, on a weekly basis. Um, the owner would contract um, a company like Waste Management or similar that would, um, you know, dispose of the um, trash on a weekly or twice a week as needed. What about the stormwater? Uh, so stormwater, um, it, with regards to existing conditions, we've... Um, under existing conditions, the roof was, uh, you know, those roof leaders that were just sheet flowing right into the road, um, and it was undetained. Under proposed conditions, I mean, um, the site is not deemed a major development as per DP. Um, you know, therefore, it's not more than a quarter acre of uh, additional impervious nor over an acre of uh, disturbance. However, to the best ability possible, what we're doing is we're collecting the roof drains um, we're collecting the roof area into a series of roof trains that will be collected as well as these yard inlets um, and that's going directly to the manhole. So it's not going to be sheet flowing into the road as it does today. It's actually going to be collected into the yard inlets and would be conveyed and discharged into the manhole um, right in North Beverwick Road over here. There are no environmental constraints here on the site we need to worry about? No, no known environmental constraints that we're aware of. Uh, so on the streetscape at the moment, we are, we are proposing um, concrete sidewalk. Um, and we are, um, as per the uh, board's engineer's recommendation, we are looking to adopt um, whatever streetscape is required along that corridor, which I'll have to um, meet with your office and you know get a copy of those. And we, we're willing to comply with that because I know along the corridor there's pavers and whatnot. So we w we're willing to comply um, with the North uh, Beverwick um, uh, corridor uh, specifications. There are pavers now, correct. That is correct. And, and looking to enhance, but that will we'll, we'll continue to uh, you know, coordinate with the um, engineer's office. Uh, so with regards to the water service, and I was just speaking with um, our, the project architect as well, I mean, typically that's 
finalized when we get into building plans, um, you know, based on the demand of the project. And of course, we'll have to do a flow test of, you know, the, the water um, service in the road, depending on the pressure. That would also determine the size of the line. Um, but basically, we would comply with uh, the building code and whatever is required to, um, to put water service. Uh, it's my understanding that building will have a fire sprinkler. So once we engage in MEP based on that service, I anticipate it's probably going to be a four inch line. So we'd be looking at a dedicated um, four inch um, fire. And, you know, and then we'll have a two inch uh, for domestic with a Siamese connection at the, at the roadway. That's correct. Uh, yeah, we, we have two, uh, we have one van accessible handicap parking space in the closest uh, vicinity of the front entrances, um, and it appears to comply. Uh, I did. Um, to the best of my ability, I tried, um, you know, giving it, um, going through and itemizing my response to it to the best of my ability to address. Uh, in hopes that this plan does address uh, all the comments. If there's anything open-ended, I'll continue to coordinate with the uh, board engineer to address those comments. We don't have any with the no, no issues. Go ahead. I uh, had a concern about the uh, trash enclosure. I just wanted to zero in on that as far as it seems to impact the two parking spaces that are immediately adjacent to it. So I didn't know if the construction of the wall and the access to those two parking spaces, I don't know if you need to rotate the proposed trash areas and use another parking space to make it fit. Right now, it impacts both the spaces, so those are like motorcycle parking spaces. Yeah. So, that and the question on the construction of the of the walls. So at least there. Right. Will they have any geo grid tying them back? I mean, how? Um, because it's right on the property line. There's nothing behind so, them. So right now the walls are all, all under four feet. Um, so there there'll be gravity system, but more than likely there will be some geo grid there. Um, and um, you know that's going to be coordinated with the final drawings. If there is any, I mean we're not planning to disturb the na neighboring property, but if there is any need, um, that's something that we might address or get a, get a, uh, yeah, get a temporary, or yeah, a temporary construction easement from Just the neighboring the property. No, the, uh, the application now has a full basement where originally it was like a half basement. And you would be required to get a soil moving permit from the municipality or something like that from the engineer's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I and I think you, um, as per your comment, I did look at the calculations, and I think I responded. I just did a you know a quick estimate of what we thought the soil moving would be on the the site, but it definitely is a major that, soil that's moving right. program. Correct. I estimated also. Yeah, I think I responded in the letter. Um, I have the exact amount here. I can pull it up. But I think it was like twenty three hundred uh, cubic yards. Was when you get a chance, if you could reference the date of the letter. Uh, so the, the the date of my response letter to the professional's comments was um, December 28th, 2018. I could share a copy if you wish. Uh, in regards to the soil moving, uh, I estimate about 2,700, uh, 2,735 cubic yards. Do I have that? No. This was submitted, should have been submitted with the package. I have not seen that. <coughs> That's an itemized response to all the professionals' this letters. So this I got is the a yeah, I saw the look on your face. I, and I was the like, <laughs> plan, but not the, uh, yeah, <coughs> I apologize. I, I saw the look on your face. I, I mean, I, th I thought, um, do you know, um, no, Mr. Uh, Candil, this I think came with it unintentionally, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we are looking at a one, two, three, four page letter on. Is it Daytel? Is that the correct pronunciation? Correct. Engineering letterhead. Yep. Dated December 28th, 2018. We only have the one copy. Uh, and Council, how would you like to mark this? A1? Mark that as A1. I'm going to make a notation on the bottom, A-1, and I'm going to circle it. Yeah, the intent of that itemized response was the four response letters, uh, review letters we received from professionals that addressed every one. 
um, and that was the intention was for it to be submitted with the plans upon resubmission. Okay. I'll take a look at it. Yeah, I'm going to make a note or two, and then I'll pass it out. The residential parking for the residential units, will they have assigned parking spaces? Um, we're not planning on doing that uh, because of, you know, the uses. We don't feel that they're going to coincide. And, it, it, you know, I think it's something that we can uh, continue to monitor. And if deemed um, that, you know, if deemed necessary, we'd be willing to do that at a later date. But I think based off of the natural course of parking, we don't see any conflicts during the peak times. But just going back to your previous comment, I didn't forget you were talking about um, the spaces. So on the one spot over here, you know, with the turning and everything, it does work. It's really this one spot that there's a little section of the wall that we can cut back. But I do a turning radius with the car, and it does. And one thing I was suggesting to uh, the owner um, is that maybe we re reserve this one spot to be like long-term parking for employees. Uh, or something like that too. There's, based on what's shown there, we would need we would need some adjustments. Now, I would re refer also to the construction detail. The construction detail shows as a board on board fence, <coughs> which is just seems to be in conflict with the. This would be a block wall, I would imagine. Correct, modular block so wall. So that should be shown on the detail. Okay. And I'd be most interested in how the fence is going to be constructed with the wall. Yeah. I yeah, I, re I responded to that too in the letter, saying that uh, you know when we produce the final construction documents, we would uh, provide a detail, more specific detail of how the wall and the fence would um, you, you know would uh, coincide. Do we need to iron out the actual details before we pass it on to uh, the planning board, uh, the township engineer for inspection services? Certainly. So things that are, as far as the pavers. Um, similar type papers that are being used out there now, the uh, the parking modifications, uh, Correct. the details for the wall, uh, but there's going to be a construction easement, that kind of thing. Certainly. So, uh, all right. Oh, the, uh, there's one more variance or exception that I noted uh, based on the fact that it's now commercial, it would need a loading space. So that would be something you would add to the list that uh, you're not proposing loading space. A proposed loading space for the commercial use? Yes, if you look at the um, our ordinance. Uh, Excuse me, Mr. Holloway, could you yeah, speak up a little bit? I oh, really yeah, can't no, hear I'm trying well. to. The, so I looked, checked the ordinance when they switched it to commercial, and based on the ordinance definition for a certain amount of commercial, you, for retail, you need one lo loading space. Yeah, um, look at that. I mean, based on the operations and what I understand, I mean, based on the retail, um, it's it wouldn't be a heavy use where they would um, where they would um, where they would need a, a dedicated loading area. Um, but I guess formality, I guess that would be something that we would be requesting a waiver on. Yeah, we just got this tonight. So. I don't. That was my only topic. Um, I thought I thought it was submitted with. Um, um, I could do the best I can. I can go through the the professionals. Um, can we take three seconds to make a copy of it so that Mr. Candil has it and can refer to it? Oh, yeah. 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 This is in response to uh, 33 items, is it? Uh, on the report from it's a so piece of work yeah so yeah. we're going to go through all 33 uh, council did you want to uh, address each <laughs> of the uh, I want to go I want to make sure everybody understands what yeah that, I think that'd be important yeah. okay yeah. so if we could just have a brief recess and maybe make a copy from Mr. can we take a quick recess to make a I thought I thought the testimony was that you would conform to all of the engineers comments we did say that What is confusing about we did say that? Well, I'm not confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensing that everyone's kind of surprised by this letter, so I want to oh. make sure we answer these questions. Well, I'll, I'll I don't, I don't think that negates. I think the, I think based on everything, we are complying with all the engineers' comments. It's 
been introduced into the record, we should take a minute or two or as much time as necessary to make sure that everybody is comfortable with this new exhibit. So I would ask if we could take a quick recess so that the secretary can make a copy uh, for the expert and then we could uh, proceed. Or if you want, we could have somebody else come up and yeah, would you prefer to do that? Do you have another expert you want to present? Yes, yeah, so I can call Mr. Steiger. He can talk about the traffic conditions while we're Are we okay with that? Will he talk about the parking? The yes, sir. Too? Yes, sir. All right. Before we proceed to your next expert, however, you're amending your application with regard to uh, a variance of what uh, caliber? Have your next witness, please. Oh, who was here? Mr. Steiger, Mr. Steiger, if you please uh, stand up. Yes. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. I do. Your name for the record, please. It's Joseph Steiger, S T A I G A R. And you are appearing in what capacity? Traffic engineer, professional engineer. Counsel, if you will dear your witness. Mr. Steiger, <coughs> you have appeared before this board many times as a traffic engineer. Is that true? Correct. How is your license? Right. Still there, <laughs> yes. Uh, how many boards have you testified before? Uh, I, I, I'd say every municipality throughout the state and well over a thousand occasions as a traffic engineer. I would submit Mr. Steiger is an expert for traffic engineering. Any objections to accepting uh, Mr. Steiger's qualifications? No. Your application. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Steiger, uh, you heard the questions. Everyone wants to talk about parking. Why don't we get right to it? Yes. You've had an opportunity to examine the uh, situation on site uh, existing and what is proposed, and you've had an opportunity to examine North Beverwick Road and its surrounding roadways. Why don't you tell us what you've discovered? Yes. Um, pretty much lived over uh, on uh, on uh, North Beverwick Road over the past um, uh, week in, in doing parking surveys. And what we did was we went and determined uh, what availability of parking there is. Uh, because we, we, we are requesting a variance uh, for the number of parking spaces. Uh, per your ordinance, the accumulative parking requirement for both the residential and the retail component components um, adds up to seven spaces for the, excuse me, uh, just bear with me a second. Um, nine spaces we have five five units five residential units that require 1.8 parking spaces per unit that requires nine spaces the um, uh, res retail component of 4,284 square feet at five per thousand one space for every 200 square feet equates to five per thousand that requires 21 spaces your ordinance takes the cumul cumul cumulative uh, result of that. The nine uh, plus the 21 uh, equates to 30 spaces. We have 19. So we are 11 short, technically, per your ordinance. Two aspects that I believe we can justify that the 19 uh, is sufficient is A, what is actually the parking experience for your uh, re, uh, residential units these are rental units and what is the parking experience for the retail also how does it compare to your ordinance that's one thing is it less if it's less than that obviously that helps us in terms of justifying the variance um, and the second aspect is retail and residential do not peak at the same time they're sharing the same parking spaces but late at night when everybody's home, the residents are home, the retail is pretty much closed or it's uh, minimal oc occupancy. In the reverse, during the day, the residential is out, primarily at work and doing, running errands, doing their business through the day when the, when the retail uh, peaks. So they're 90, 180 degrees out of sync with one another. They do not peak coincidentally. So what is the resultant of the two 
uh, uses. It's certainly less than what your ordinance assumes, which is peak on peak. It does not peak on peak. So what we did was we went to two sources to determine what the actual experience is. Um, the U.S. Census data has information for rental units in the township of Parsippany and what the vehicle uh, availability is per rental unit. And that number is 1.38. It's a little bit lower than the 1.8 that your ordinance requires. What we find consistently uh, in, in every municipality, rental units typically uh, generate less parking than owner occupied. And the U.S. Census data has that information. It has, it breaks it down into owner occupied units and has a vehicle uh, availability for those units, which is always higher than rental units. For whatever reason, uh, socioeconomic uh, available income, people that rent units do not have as many cars as owner occupied units, say condominiums versus rental units. So what we looked at was the fact that we, if, if, if the experience is 1.38 per unit and not the 1.8, which is the RSIS standard, which is the universal standard. That's for owner-occupied units. That's for units that um, are out in Somers Somerset County or Hunterdon County or Warren County or Sussex County where the only availability of being able to commute is by privately owned vehicles. You do not have bus service out in those areas. So RSIS standards, which your ordinance uh, utilizes the same standard, is the maximum you'll find throughout the state. Well, here in Parsippany, particularly on North, North Beverwick Road, we do have bus service. We do have um, uh, the, the big bus stop at, uh, on Route 46, which is not walk walkable, but certainly if someone had two cars, two commuters, someone could dr drop them off. So there is availability of it, and that's probably the reason why the 1.38 makes a little bit more sense than the 1.8 as well. Um, the difference isn't much. One, what your ordinance says is not, you need nine spaces if you use that maximum, and all I'm saying is you need seven spaces. So the difference isn't really that much, but I think that the seven spaces is more realistic. The other aspect is the retail. All right, five per thousand is a high number for small retail, and this is small retail. 4,000 square feet is a small, a small uh, retail components. And um, if you think about the time that you may spend, and the two, um, I'll t the two extremes are, let's say a convenience store. As a customer at a convenience store, if you're in that store five minutes or six minutes, that's, that's the average time. When you're at Short Hills Mall or Livingston Mall, you're there for an hour many times. And your o occupancy rate of parking at larger retail is greater because customers are in the store longer. So those hot, bigger retail need more parking than smaller retail. Um, and that's documented by the Institute of Transportation Engineers, the Urban Land Institute, ULI also. They've found that that certainly is the case. Larger retail generates more traffic than smaller retail. And that larger retail standard by ITE and ULI is five per thousand. So your ordin ordinance mimics the maximum. If you, if you had a large retail um, shopping center in town, the standard would be 5.2, I'm sorry, 5.0 uh, per thousand. That, sh that should be the um, uh, utilization. ITE for smaller retail finds that 2.94 spaces per thousand is what the standard is. That's their documented standard. What I did was I studied, surveyed um, the shopping centers in the immediate area. One next door, which is a small one, has Valentino's Pizza, and that's primarily the major uh, parking generator. Generator there, the Verizon store and H&R Block uh, are, are smaller. But I also did the, um, the Rite Aid shopping center, Troy Plaza, uh, which is a larger. We have a post office there, which is a major um, uh, p uh, parking generator. We have some vacancy in, the, in, in Valentino's uh, shopping center in the back behind the, um, or next to the post office. Um, Troy Plaza had a quick check. That's no longer there. There's 2,800 square feet that's empty there. 
So if I take, I took, uh, I discounted that vacant space, well, when I take a look at that square footage, and when we took our parking counts during peak times, midday and, uh, and at, in the evening on uh, weekdays and Saturdays, we find that the parking, the, the highest parking demand is 2.90 per thousand square feet. So here we have a living shop circumstance, shopping center right next door, 2.90 per thousand is its peak demand. The ITE, Institute of Transportation Engineers, find, util, documents that for this size shopping center, 2.94 should be the number. And when we use that, we have a peak demand of 13 parking spaces. The 4,284 square feet uh, times the 2.90 rounds uh, up to 13 parking spaces. So 13, uh, if, if we assume peak on peak, that the retail peaks the same time as the residential, the seven spaces for the residential that I say is the real number, and the 13 spaces for the retail, which again I say is the real number, if they peak on peak, which we know they don't, gives us 20 spaces, 20 parked cars. But there's going to be an offset of that, as I said before, and they're not going to peak on peak. Certainly the 19 spaces will accommodate both of those uses at any time of the day when you have those fluctuations of when the two uses do, do experience their actual parking demand. So for that reason, I believe that this site will be self-sufficient in parking requirements. The fallback is this. If I'm wrong and we go back and say, you know what, Mr. Steiger, you're wrong. It should be third, the number should be 30 because I believe it's going to be peak on peak. I believe five per thousand is the real number. I believe 1.8 per unit is the real number. We need 30 spaces. We have 30 spaces on the street. On North Beverwick Road, you can park. The public can park there. The only time that I saw there's a sign restriction, and I don't know why it's there, but for some reason, from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Fridays, you can't park. That's the only restriction that's signed on North Beverwick Road when you can't park. The rest of the time, the rest of the week, from my, from my what I can find, is that you can park on North Beverwick, Beverwick Road. When I took my parking surveys, and like I said, I took them midday and, on, on, and, and, and early evenings, <clears throat> there were um, a maximum of three cars parked at any time on North Beverwick Road. Within 600 feet to the north and 600 feet to the south from Lake Lakeshore Drive to Claudine Terrace. Lakeshore Drive is to the north. Claudine's to the south. They're about 600 feet in both directions. There's well over 30 cars that you can park on, on the street. So within 600 feet of this site, there's 27 parking spaces. So if we have 19 spaces, your ordinance requires another 11 spaces. Certainly those 11 can be found on North Beverwick Road. So there's availability for parking on, on the street. That, I'm, that's, that's pretty much, I'm, I'm finished. So. Any questions? I have a few questions, if yep. you don't mind. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm interested in the commercial space. You're giving statistics, but I assume it's way too early to tell us what the tenant is going to be. And it could change, and it could change to something different that And may, it could be multiple tenants. Could be multiple tenants, yes. Okay. So to, to, to discuss numbers when you're comparing a box store to these retail the smaller store and the time people spend we don't know if that pertains because let's say a restaurant goes in there those people are going to stay in there a lot longer than it was takeout or if it's whatever sort of those numbers are a little deceptive because it's really it's a combination of the square foot and the purpose of the space not just the square footage of the space no that that's a good point but your your ordinance controls the restaurant. Let's say a restaurant goes into this site. Your ordinance requires the the higher of the two, the greater of the two, either I forget what the number is. I think it's one space for every 75 square feet of restaurant, or one for, one space for every three seats. So let's say it becomes a restaurant. The whole 4,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. 
we're asking for a variance, the deviation from um, from uh, from uh, from 20, 21 space. Thirty. Excuse me. The thirty. Right, but if I did, um, but I'm, but twenty one for the retail. Oh, okay. All right. So let's arrest, let's say a restaurant comes in there with seventy seats. We need another variance. Okay. So there's a control in your ordinance that that uh, that, uh, and I think a restaurant is probably the the biggest extreme. Um, I guess you could have um, even a I'm thinking of physical therapy Yoga that requires studio. more more parking. So your, your, your ordinance, depending upon who the tenant may come in, you, they'll be back before this board if it exceeds that parking demand. Because it's also, you, we discussed peak on peak. We don't know what peak is for the commercial because if it's for a restaurant, mm -hmm. it might be the same peak. People are coming home from work at seven o'clock, peak for a restaurant seven o'clock. Yeah. So it's, it's not really great because the comparisons, we don't know what the comparison is yet until we know the tenant. Yeah, you make, and again, very good point. And that's why when we took our surveys of what was happening at the other other, um, other uh, shopping centers in the area, but also what's happening on North Beverwick Road, we took them from seven o'clock, 6.30 actually, to nine o'clock at night, because I think the restaurant is probably the closest peak on peak that you may have, because that seven o'clock you know, window time frame people are coming home from work and the restaurants peaking as well so what we look took a look at on on North Beverwick you have 20 uh, up to t uh, 27 parking spaces are you able to give testimony on what you witnessed for the public parking and you 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 you've, you've said how many spaces how many mm -hmm. were occupied how many were open when there's you observed? A, a, from 600 feet which which I which I think is a destination if, I, if I'm if I'm willing to go to a good restaurant that happens to occupy the space, walking 600 feet is not a long mm -hmm. walk. So that, that was reasonable. From Lakeshore Drive to Claudine Terrace, which is 600 feet to the north, 600 feet to the south, there's over 30 spaces. I could park 30 parallel parked cars, discounting for driveways, fire hydrants, and, and areas that doesn't make any sense to park. And there were th a maximum three cars parked. When I, when I studied from Thursday, a, a Thursday evening last week to Saturday evening, middays and, and evenings, there were three, maximum three cars. Sometimes there were only one, sometimes two, sometimes zero, but maximum was three. So there's well over 27 parking spaces within 600 feet of this site on the street. And the only restriction, like I said, the only sign that I saw was no parking 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. on Fridays. So just to I clarify, you're why. saying out of the 30 spots that you witnessed, 27 were open? Yes. Okay. Nobody parks on that, that part of North Beverly. Okay. And the reason being is if you pass by those shopping centers, the food town, that's got to be 75% empty at any time. Uh, the, uh, the Rite Aid, the Troy Plaza, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's about half full when you, when you look at all the spaces. And then Valentino's... Um, that's about half full too, because so so therefore those those sites are operating very well. They're overparked, let's say, and uh, there's no need, no reason for anybody to park on North Beverly. Beverly. So I think that's the reason why you, you you see that experience. Thank you. You're welcome. What bus stops are along that? There's uh the two two bus stops to just to the south of us. Um, I got the numbers. Both within walking distance. Me? Both within walking distance. Yeah. I know that yeah. Parking yeah. Ride is yep. Gone. Yep. 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 Um, the the street parking that you're you're banking on, you're you're 11 spaces short, and you testified that should I, you know, if you were wrong and you need all those additional spaces, we have the street. Are you familiar with any other businesses that are using that same rationale? Meaning, we don't have enough parking for our business but their street parking my point being how many businesses along that road are banking on that street parking as a part of their requirements like you did well I think I, I don't I think minimal because the actual experience of who's parking on the street is minimal so you went last week we went Thursday night when it was about five degrees no it was warmer than that that was no five degrees was this past was this the weekend 
Yeah, okay. we didn't go Monday. I'm Monday just wondering night. if people weren't out shopping because <laughs> of the weather. No, they were they were decent nights because I did I did most many of the surveys myself. We went Thursday, <coughs> six thirty to eight thirty okay. p.m. We went Friday, twelve to two lunchtime, and then seven to nine, and then Saturday the same thing. And the weather was reasonable. That's really what I'm getting. Yeah, it wasn't okay. raining. I yeah. I bought takeout from Valentino's, and the other night I took at the Chinese. Um, I had a hot sour soup. It was pretty good. That, that's like probably right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you did you stated that you measured the Saturday peak times yes which I assume are different than the Monday through Friday peak times there's residential so this it's likely that Saturday during the day the cars could be home when whatever business is there is peaking I'm not following your question Saturday because you, you were stating that Monday through Friday that, you know, those those residents are going to be at work, their cars are going to be gone, oh, opening up some day, right. So yeah. Saturday, it's yeah. more likely those cars are going to be home and the business could be peaking. And you're still comfortable. Oh, you still, it's you, your testimony that's still sufficient yeah, parking. Yeah, A, because, um, because even if they're peak on peak, what I found was 2.90 for the retail at, on, a, on a Saturday also. Um, so that's um, that's 13 parking spaces. Let's say all the residents stay home. They're not shopping, although they do leave. They, people go out and run errands. But let's assume all seven cars are there. That's the 13 for the retail, seven. So we're, 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 all, we're under that's 20. One, you're we're over one for space. 19. Yeah. Yeah. You're still so, over. Yeah, we're still over, yeah. even, if, even if everybody is home at the same time. But we have that street parking, because on that Saturday, like I said, that's when we still found at least 27 parking spaces available on North Beverly. I also surveyed, I, and I don't think we, we need it, but again, it, it gives a flavor of how the area is, um, in my experience, over parked, or my, the way I've characterized it. Um, there is permit parking allowed behind the fire station. I guess you need from the police department to get a permit. It's empty. Uh, I'm sure when there's a fire, it probably fills up, you know, with the firemen going there. But, or what? Or, or an event going on at the firehouse. So I'm sure it does fill up. But the times that we took all our surveys, nothing was going on. And then the, the Lake Hiawatha um, parking lot, which is 1,000 feet from our site. Too far, but that was pretty much empty also. But it, it gives a flavor of what's happening in the area um those parking lots municipal parking lots would be full if there was a demand for it and they were they were empty thank you you're welcome anybody else anybody uh, uh in the public wish to ask questions of this witness nobody Mr. Thank you want to go back to the engineer or? call mr candil if that's all right Mr. Candil is resuming his testimony, which was interrupted. I'm going to remind Mr. Candil that he has been previously sworn in. Thank you. Counsel, where do you want to pick up? Yeah, we all, oh, you need a counsel. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Candil, indi you indicated that you agreed with all the uh, engineer's comments, but of course a review of the engineer's letter says that there are some questions there that need to be answered. So why don't we go through your uh, letter that we marked as Exhibit A1 and answer some of those questions. Do it in whatever order you want to do. No, should I also go through the other professionals' comments as well or just strictly engineering? Well, if it, if it makes things a little bit tidier, I can go directly to the ones that I still have a question on instead Sir. of going through all the comments themselves. Well, Certainly, I think that would be good. good idea. Right. Makes should sense. I address the other three letters very quick um, or no need? Let's just do the engineers. Let's do the oh, engineers, then we'll go back to Okay. So I just wanted to follow up on items number first, really open item is number 10. And it says the response was the site plan package has been revised accordingly my comment is the soil erosion plan the limit of disturbance would include the small section that's being connected to the storm drain it's a 
right now there's a level of disturbance for the soil erosion plant. It would just be enlarged a little bit to incorporate the uh, connection to the storm drain itself in the street. Okay. Um, let me just turn to the soil erosion plan. Oh, yep, I see that. Yeah. Certainly, we can yeah. comply with that. Yeah, we'll comply with that. Uh, extending the limited disturbance line to encompass the uh, connection to the right, it's, it's storm okay. drain. The um, next item would actually be uh, item number 22. I think um, a lot of the items were resolved with the revised submission. And what I did is I went through and I marked up my comments with remaining question items. And that goes back to the trash enclosure. We discussed it a little bit. That's something we have to maybe discuss a little bit further regarding the detail and the operation for the trash. Yeah. Now, based on the testimony from the parking traffic engineer, if we had to lose one more space, it sounds like that would not be a terrible thing. If I, we had I, to I, move I, the space as employee parking. That would be preferred, but I think based off his testimony, he was saying that if we had to lose it, that would be okay. But we could designate it as employee parking if we didn't want to lose it and exacerbate the variance, right? That, that is correct. That is correct. So really, it's either or. Well, okay. Once I see the detail, I can make a informed decision on what's going on with the uh, two parking spaces. Right now, it looks like they're really not usable. With that, uh, it's going to be a, a block wall or something that encloses the trash area. So you can include that with the um, board on board fence with the gates. It's just something I can see the gates left open, well, the, impacting those two spaces. Well, the wall, the wall coming um, perpendicular to the parking here, that won't have a, um, that won't have a. It would not need a high board on board fence there because. It's really be screening it from the back, so we can cut that. We back. can. I'll wait yeah. for an uh, updated detail. Right now, the detail doesn't really comply with or look like what's being shown on the site plan. Certainly. Yeah, item number twenty-four, my report. Yep. Now, uh, was the archi architect going to um, give testimony also? Uh, yes. Okay. My question is the architectural elevations compared to the engineering plans, the way the lights are shown. I just need them to be consistent. In other words, uh, there are lights shown on the engineering plan, but when you go to the architectural elevation, there are goosenecks and uh, lights over the back doors, and uh, not the, the overall light, the s things of that nature. Yeah, and myself also in the architect, we discussed that the lights on the architecturals are more decorative, so I wasn't using them. Right. Um, into the the lighting calculations and foot cal candle calculation, um, but certainly schematically we can we can make it more consistent. Item number twenty five is just a, a bookkeeping uh, to change the detail to provide DGA dense graded aggregate for all pipe trench repairs under pavement. That, that should have been updated. I, I, I thought I looked. I didn't see. It. I just wasn't sure. What I did is combine two details into one. Well, maybe uh, that's why. Yeah. Um, so I would refer well, that you. That goes hand in hand with the next item, which is <coughs> item number twenty-eight. On the site plan, it refers to full pavement, full depth pavement, but it doesn't have a detail that says this is the full depth pavement detail. So I think you probably when it was combined. It wasn't quite clear. Yeah, I, I can clarify. The full depth pavement should be the standard asphalt pavement detail, and then the uh, restoration. Right. So there's going to be a, a, a parking lot area detail, and then there should be a full depth pavement for the area that designated detail. Yeah. Yeah. The full depth you're, you're talking about here. Um, yes. We're, we're doing the salt right. cutting. Right. Yeah. And I, that's the detail I combined with the restoration and the salt cutting. Um, because the restoration I was using for when we were making the connections. Oh, I saw it. It didn't have the thickness of the pavement on there, though. Should be there on the revised plan. No? Um, yeah, let me just, I have a small uh, set. All right. This was, the intent was to merge it here. Okay, all right. There. What are you referring to? 
referring to? Uh, referring to she, uh, C08 uh, detail. Uh, the This is the trench and temporary pavement restoration detail. Mr. Chairman, I have a few other questions, but there's Just already really been. Just really quick, uh, it, that is part of the packet? That is part of, that is part of the submitted package. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I have a few other questions, but they have been answered by the in initial testimony. Well, one question so I would like to hear the answer to is uh, number 31, rooftop equipment and auxiliary generator. Yeah, uh, um, uh, I'll defer to testimony, but I did talk to the project architect, and there won't be any ground structures. Everything will be roof mounted uh, with regards to the HVAC and, and mechanical units. Uh, yes. I have no further questions. Mr. Chavik, is there any report that we need to go over? Mine really relate to the architect and the planner. Okay. <coughs> any else, Mr. O'Neill? Uh, no further questions. For this any board members have any more questions with the with testimony? Anybody from the public have any questions for this witness? No. I guess that's it. Mr. Fox. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Fox is the architect? Yes, Stand, raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, I do. And your first and last name, please. Kenneth Fox, architect for the applicant. K E N N E T H. Correct. Traditional spelling at Bullex. Bullet dear, please. Yes, I am my licenses that are current. I've testified before this board often. I have a uh, license from, I have a uh, degree from NJIT in 1981, and uh, licensed back to practice architecture since 85. And I've had my own uh, firm, Fox Architectural Design, since 1987. Testified before about 60 boards in uh, mostly northern New Jersey and before this board, this board many times. I would submit Mr. Fox as an expert in architectural issues. Any objections? No objections. We'll accept. Your, your witness. Thank you, Mr. Fox. So why don't you uh, <coughs> go through what it is we're proposing here and show us uh, how you play it. Really. We are propo we're proposing on the site, as described by the engineer, a uh, two-story with a storage basement, a two-story structure uh, where we have uh, our office retail uh, space on the lower level, and we have uh, five apartments shown on the second level. So the lower level, lower level units are accessed, uh, lower level retail is lo uh, accessed from the front of the building. We've separated this into three potential tenants. They could be they could be mixed so there would be uh, less less tenants uh, if that's the way that uh, it was able to be rented. Uh, but uh, in fact, we're providing for th providing for uh, three separate entrances as well as uh, for three signs and shown how it would be broken up into three three approximately equal spaces. Obviously, they're not they're not quite uh, quite the same. Um, any of the other facilities we have uh, we have. Um, Utilities in the basement. We also have utility room uh, in the back, which will be which will be serving uh, the the uh, retail units. We have the main access for the main access for the uh, apartment units, which is uh, coming in from the sidewalk on the uh, drive on the driveway side of the building. So one would enter uh, the stairway, come up the stairway at this location, and uh, a, ce a central cor central corridor across through the center of the building, uh, and then also has a a emergency ex a exit uh, out from the uh, opposite side. So we, we have loaded the uh, corridor on both sides so that towards the front, uh, over the top of essentially uh, lining up with the uh, with potential retail units here, so we can line up windows and have a, a good aesthetic. We've shown three, uh, all, all the units are one bedroom. So we've shown three small one bedroom units on the upper level between 643 square feet and 655 square feet uh, for each of those one bedrooms. Fairly small units, but uh, we will work very well. On the, uh, on the rear, the these two units are slightly larger, a little bit more 
uh, larger bedroom and a little bit larger in the, uh, uh, in the family area. Uh, and these units are 916 square feet each, uh, both then facing the windows facing the rear. The lower level, the basement level, is uh, access for storage. This way we have storage available for uh, renters of the apartments. We have some storage available uh, for some of the retail. So we would be able to dif uh, differentiate that probably in about eight different areas if necessary as, uh, as needed. Uh, and the landlord would be able to control, landlord would control that. I'm referring, as I, as I did my testimony, to uh, sheet Z1, which was uh, as, submitted to, as submitted to the board. On Z2, which is the uh, elevations, we provided elevation on the front uh, facing Beverwick Road, uh, which, which we think is a, a, an attractive look. Create a little bit more accent towards the center, keep uh, multiple gables, um, some uh, uniform windows over the top of uh, storefront glass on the, on the lower level. We've incorporated some stone, we've incorporated a clapboard look, so we, get, we give it that uh, commercial look, but uh, not a 1960s commercial look. We think we, we're creating something that's fairly attractive with some, some what we call residential detailing into it, but it really makes uh, what we think is an attractive building. Talked about the HVAC units. What we've done here for the roof is create, we've created the look of a pitched roof by pitching the roof up partly, and then the center portion of that would be a uh, flat roof inside of that. And you can see on left elevation, we've dot, uh, dotted in where that roof would be behind the gable roof. That allows our air conditioning units to then be set down inside the roof, so that in fact that they're, they're hidden. So what we see from all four sides, what we see from all four sides is a pitched shingle roof, and uh, we're able to then hide the units inside there, as opposed to uh, a lot of times what people will do is put a uh, mansard across the front, on three sides, and uh, they have it uh, dropping off the back. We realize and recognize that there's residences behind us, and so by doing that on four sides, we'll be able to uh, just make the, give, that, give that kind of character on all four sides. Now, was mentioned about the lighting. We will obviously coordinate with the engineer. We have provided information to the engineer, but he didn't use it in his photometrics. I think that uh, we'd be able to do that. We've provided uh, some decorative lighting for the decorative lighting for the signage, and we would have at each of the entrances and or exits, uh, we have some required lighting. We have essentially just a uh, t standard entrance light at, uh, for, the, for the residential use. I think that's a significant aspect of Lighting that's on your plans is what we're proposing. That's correct. It's all decorative lighting, and it's uh, in keeping with the streetscape that uh, we're going to be restoring. Yeah, we're, we're trying to create a contemporary street streetscape, make sure that it blends in with uh, that which is happening as the as Beverwick Road gets developed. This is what we're planning, and we can add the photometrics to the uh, plan uh, for, from the engineer. What we try to do is keep the lights in the front where they would tilt back towards a sign. In, in fact, by doing that, it keeps them from spilling over and having a source of light seen from, from off the site. And we would be able to, and the others would either be shielded or they'd be low level light, which is just, uh, just to light the area at the doorway. And this pitch roof design, which is camouflaging the rooftop equipment, that's all complying with light regulations? Well, that's correct. We have uh, designed the building to conform with uh, the height of elevation um, we have, it's uh, right now 34.04 uh, to the maximum height uh, from the average grade, and uh, that does comply. I have uh, no further questions. Joe, there's a little monument sign shown on the site plan, correct? Did we talk about that at all? <coughs> Do we have a picture of it? In, in the plan set? Yeah, the plan. Uh, we, we do have a detail on the back, but we, um, a signage package will probably be uh, submitted at the time of occupancy. Uh, but we do have dimensions and calling out for space number one, space number two. That's all compliant with regulations. That is compliant with regulations, 25 square feet on each side, for the side, and then um, we account for 22. How high is it? Can the microphones pick up Mr. Candil from where he's standing? Um, as shown, 
as shown on our plan, the maximum height of it, um, so it's an eight foot pole, seven foot, uh, seven foot um, height for the actual sign, giving a total height of uh, 15 feet high, and the width is three foot seven inches. Uh, that is correct. The, uh, okay, I'd like to. So the staircases are inside, not outside. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And the one you mentioned goes up, and the other is emergency stairs going down only. Well, they're both stairways. They're obviously it's just the uh, one is not readily avail readily available to the parking area, so it would be. I'm suggesting that one is going to be utilized for the entrance all the time. The other accesses the exterior, so uh, it, it's just not in a position to be access to utilized all the time. Are you required to have ADA accessibility to the apartments upstairs? No, we, on, on, no, we don't have to have the uh, accessibility to. We do have to provide adaptability uh, within the units. So, um, not to uh, the units. Uh, no, I don't believe no. Really? I, I, we looked up the research, so. How would they get? To yeah, that's a little. Right. You have to make the, the other, units the adaptable, but <laughs> they don't have to get there. It, it's the same thing with any handicap accessible in, in office buildings. The second floor has to be a handicap accessible office, uh, offices and uh, they, or bathrooms, and don't have to be uh, accessible stairways. They have different requirements for vertical accessibility as well as accessible accessible features. Okay, so uh, the, on the second floor layout, the five apartments. Uh, so there's an entryway off the central hall. So all the units will enter their units off the central hall. That's correct. And you're expecting that they will all enter up the far right stairway because that's where the parking lot is. That's where the parking is, yes. Okay, so if they wanted to come in the other stairway, they can't come in that way? or where is No, they, they go ra around, the back, around the back of the building to access that. And it allows them to, they, they could do that. But. So that's for emergency more... That's the that's the that's the proposed usage, yeah. and I anticipate that our keying keying system for the tenants would make it so that they're going to access one door and then be able to exit uh, on another. And I don't know if it's at this time we have to worry about that, but the the people that are in these units then once it, they only have one way into their unit and one way out of their unit. The way you're drawing it up here, right? Uh, you no, know, as far as the c code requires. Code requires a single uh, means of egress from each unit to a hallway that goes in two directions. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to that with uh, egress windows, which are uh, sized accordingly for, uh, for egress. But the actual egress, correct, there's a single door from each unit to a hallway that uh, exits in two directions and that meets, the, that meets the, all the building codes. This building will be fully sprinkled, right? That's correct. Does that include closets? Yes. I want to come back to the monument sign, Mr. O'Neill. Yes. For whatever reason, I do not have an ordinance available to <coughs> confirm the variance. So we won't call it a variance, but if it turns out you do need one, you'll either have to abandon it or come back. There is, is the height of the of the of the sign requires a setback, and you're only a couple feet off the road. I don't know if you're even a foot off the right of way. While we're waiting for that, I do. I'm going to make a correction to what I said about the accessibility. We do. We have designed this so that an adaptability it could be a, a stair lift could in fact be installed. We made this wide enough. So with a stair lift installed, with stair egress stair is still wide enough. So it does have the ability to be adaptable as well. Thank you. And there'll be firewalls between the lower units? We have fire separations required between units. We have fire separations between floors, um, including all, all penetrations. Yes. Did you find it? I did. It's going to be locked, is it? Does it have a 
You said it's all for These side are all for, for, for side signs. Warning signs. No freestanding sign shall be located closer than 15 feet to any property line. Uh, under the exception of the P5 zone, which is where we are, which is 10 feet. So we do need a variance for that sign. We'll amend for that sign variance then. What is the, uh, Mr. Fox, you can hit Mr. Candiel, that look at him again from what that distance is. Can I set that? We have a 10 foot setback. You have a 10 foot setback? Yeah. From the edge of the sign or the pole? From the edge of the sign. There's a dimension on page uh, C okay. CO3. Strike the amendment. Mr. Fox's testimony. I have no further, te no further questions. Mm -hmm. Anybody else on the board have any questions? The architect? Any members of the public have any questions for Mr. Fox? Uh, no. I see none. Thank you. With that, I'll call Mr. Carl back. Okay. Mr. Carl back will be testifying in what capacity? Mr. O'Neill. Mr. Carlbeck, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Your first name? David. Carlbeck is... K-A-R-L-E-B-A-C-H. Uh, -E David Boyd, do you hear him, please? Hi. Carlbeck, go ahead. <laughs> I'm a licensed professional planner, and I have been for 24 years. I previously qualified and testified before this board on dozens of occasions. <coughs> Accepted. Proceed. <laughs> Mr. Carlback, you've had an opportunity to examine the application that's here before the board this evening? Yes, I have. You've had an opportunity to examine local ordinances and the master plan? Yes, I have. Are we uh, missing a microphone, gentlemen? Yeah, we're yeah. missing a microphone. <laughs> We've been missing it all day. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Rodney, we can hear you fine. Yeah, we can hear you. Well, that's fine. So, yeah. Mr. Carlback, uh, why don't you compare this application to those documents and give us your findings? Certainly. I think we've had a lot of discussion about the site and some of the surrounding businesses in the area, so I'll forego that. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is that this site does contain a vacant building. The uh, building is currently vacant. And a vacant lot. Lot number nine, uh, which comprises part of the overall lot, or the overall site, is vacant. So that translates into a unused building and an underutilized site. And of course, as planners, what we want to make sure is that land is used for its intended purpose. Okay? And there's no intention of the B5 to have vacant land. Um, now, in terms of the improvements, I think we did a good job talking about what's being uh, proposed. I just want to remind the board that this proposal will incorporate many landscape architectural elements that are going to result in a uh, immediate site beautification, new landscaping, including a buffer at the rear of the property. Um, there is no significant evergreen vegetation uh, at the rear of the property where it abuts the residential lot line. Right now, there's it looks like a chain link fence with white vinyl slats 
uh, a shorter wood stockade fence that's in disrepair, but certainly no legitimate buffer, that's going to be remedied. Uh, new decorative concrete block pavers, new attractive signage, new decorative lighting. So all of these things, again, uh, are a vast improvement over what exists today. Uh, this is the properties in the B5 zone. It permits a variety of uses, including stores, businesses, and professional offices, barber shops and beauty salons, and similar personal service establishments, restaurants, public buildings, uh, medical and dental offices and clinics. So a wide variety of local business uses. Um, now it does permit certain conditional uses as, uh, as well. Dwelling units are permitted as conditional accessory uses subject to four requirements. One of the requirements is the dwelling unit shall be accessory use to the principal use of the site and shall be located in the same building. So that's the one conditional use requirement that's not satisfied. The other three are met. No dwelling unit should be located on the ground floor level. We meet that requirement. No more than 50% of the total floor area of the structure shall be used for dwelling purposes. That's met. A dwelling unit or units that have no, excuse me, that have an exterior entrance separate from that of the principal business use at the site. So that's met. Summarize, retail uses are permitted. Accessory apartments on the second floor are permitted. Residential dwellings as a principal use are not permitted. So in terms of the variances that are required, uh, a D3 variance is required as the proposed dwelling units are not accessory to the retail uses. And then we mentioned, I think, other variances, C variances that are required. Uh, the parking variance, of course, 30 parking spaces are required where 19 are proposed. Uh, and I believe we added on tonight a signage variance. No. no oh, excuse me. Signage no. variance is off. I'm, I'm sorry. Not the signage variance. Off We're talking uh, the loading, the loading space. Loading, loading right. space. So those are the variances. Let's talk about the proofs required for a conditional use variance. As the board knows, uh, the standards for an applicant seeing a seeking a D3 variance uh, are less burdensome than an applicant seeking a D1 or a D2 variance. So the Supreme Court specifically tailored uh, a modified version of the positive and negative criteria as it pertains to conditional use variances. And the Supreme Court tells us that conditional uses, even when they do not comport with all of the required conditions, are nonetheless compatible uses in the zone. So as planners, we don't have to struggle with whether or not the use is appropriate at this location. The governing body has already told us that it is appropriate. Instead, our focus should be on the site and the context of the overall development and whether or not the site continues to be appropriate for the use, notwithstanding those deviations from the conditional use criteria. And I believe this site does remain appropriate for the use. Uh, this is a very large lot. It's much larger than the minimum lot area requirement. Um, the minimum requirement in the zone is 4,000 square feet. This is a 14,000 square foot lot. Uh, it's rectangular. There's no impediments to redevelopment of this site. Uh, the engineer stated that there's no uh, known environmental constraints. It has nice geometry, good visibility, good accessibility. Um, so it's really ideally suited for this type of redevelopment. And again, the application fails to satisfy a single conditional use criterion and that is that the residential apartments are not accessory to the retail uses. This is what I'm going to characterize board members as a technical variance. Um, the residential apartments function exactly the same way, whether they're independent of the principal use or accessory to the principal use. So the ordinance, I think, is suggesting that the business owner or his family need to reside uh, in the apartment above the retail stores or above whatever business it happens to be. And rarely does that happen. Sometimes you'll see that with an artist's studio where the artist maintains an apartment above his studio. You'll see that with a home occupation, uh, but we really don't see that very often. Typically when we talk about accessory apartments, we're talking about accessory apartments to a principal residential use. So I'm talking specifically about granny flats, uh, in-laws apartments, carriage homes, things of that nature. 
Regarding the uh, C variances, let's talk about the parking first. Um, I think Mr. Steiger went into great detail, uh, and, and I'm not going to repeat his testimony. I'll just remind the board that, um, as vetted in, in Mr. Steiger's testimony, the proposed on-site parking is sufficient to service the proposed development. No overflow is likely to occur. Uh, if so, the overflow is going to be incidental, and there is sufficient on-street parking available on Beverwick Road to address the shortfall. Uh, in fact, the parking is available on the street along the property frontage directly in front of the site. And parking is permitted on North Beverwick in front of the site except for two hours out of the week. Um, in terms of the negative criteria, that is that, that there's no substantial detriment to the public good, um, this application actually provides a number of community benefits. Let's talk about those first. Um, originally, the retail and professional office space was needed to support the resident population, and that's noted in the 2004 master plan. Today, it's the opposite. Uh, the population is needed to support the retail uses in the area. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to infuse some residential uses to prop up and support some of these marginal business uses that exist in the business district. And Main Street retailers have been negatively affected by various factors, uh, including online retailers, big box retailers, and a lack of parking. Arlington Plaza is located 1.5 miles from the site, and that shopping center offers one-stop shopping, abundant parking. It has approximately 30 stores and 2,000 parking spaces. Redevelopment of existing underutilized parcels represents an efficient use of the land and advances state planning goals by concentrating development and areas of existing infrastructure. And many of the storefronts in the Lake Hiawatha area date back to the 1950s and the 1960s. This new building will bring this site into the 21st century. The board's planner notes in his review memo to the board that the architectural plans indicate attractive new construction. And I agree with that statement. The proposal replaces an older, outdated, vacant building with a new building with modern architectural treatments, new durable paving, new landscaping, new signage. All of these will have an immediate impact on improving the visual quality of the site. If you ask me, a detriment is what currently exists, a vacant building on an underutilized site. The proposal advances two important planning objectives of the state's strategic plan. One of the stated goals in the plan is to strengthen cities, towns, and neighborhoods by prioritizing redevelopment, the reuse and remediation of existing sites and structures, and construction on infill sites that are compatible with surrounding land uses. Another goal of the plan is to support construction and rehabilitation of homes that meet the needs of households of all sizes and income levels. So this proposal advances these st state goals by providing housing options for those people that ordinarily wouldn't be able to afford housing in the township. I don't believe there's any substantial impairment of the zoning ordinance. Residential apartments are permitted conditionally as an accessory use, okay? This is not a wholly new non-conforming use. It is one that is contemplated in the ordinance. It meets all of the high tiers of zoning. The use is permitted, the height is permitted, the density is permitted, it requires no dimensional variances, uh, only the parking variance that has been addressed by the traffic expert and the uh, loading space variance. Five one-bedroom apartments, accessory or not, are not impactful on the neighborhood in a negative way, only in a positive way. In fact, they, they will assist in supporting local merchants. And this application does provide a bona fide vegetative buffer at the rear of the property where none currently exists. Um, there were a number of master plan goals that I think are advanced by this project. Without getting into a lot of detail, the 2014 master plan re-exam has one stated goal of to provide a variety of housing types, densities, and a balanced housing supply in appropriate locations to serve the township. So I think that goal is met. Um, and another goal of the plan is to preserve and enhance the township's retail 
commercial areas by defining their functional role in the community and it goes on to make a policy statement the community contains some neighborhood retail commercial areas such as those serving Lake Hiawatha and Lake Parsippany which serve the daily needs of the residents in those areas large-scale commercial uses commonly known as big box retail should be discouraged throughout the township and I think that's exactly what's being proposed here the plan indicates three proposed storefronts which suggests a smaller retail establishment uh, yes they could be recombined at some point in the future but the plan right now is to have smaller retail establishments um, increase the walkability of the area this section of Lake Hiawatha does not have a that retail continuum it doesn't have a solid retail wall I think you have a, a doctor's office, a dentist's office you have a locksmith some strip type uh, development uh, with parking in the front yard I think this morally closely identifies with the essence of Lake Hiawatha which is to bring those retail stores right up at the at the street right up at the frontage so I'll just conclude by saying I think um, this is a very good application I think it represents a vast improvement um, and the board should feel very comfortable granting the D3 conditional use variance, the parking variance, and the loading space variance. Thank you, Mr. Carlbag. I have no further questions for this witness. Any board members uh, have any questions of the witness? Where would you envision deliveries taking place with this park uh, loading space variance? I think most of the stores in the area probably just load right from the street. They park right in front of the building. Members of the public, have any questions for this witness? Seeing none. That concludes my uh, direct uh, testimony, Mr. Chair. Any members of the public wish to speak in opposition or in favor of this application? Seeing none. Thank you. Seeing none. As Mr. Carlback indicated, uh, North Beverwick Road is an important component of this uh, community, both for Lake Hiawatha and for Persephone in general. It's uh, really a functioning main street. You have a good critical mass of uh, restaurants and shops there that needs to be maintained. We think that this application helps improve that street, upgrades that street with this uh, modern, very attractive looking building. and. Uh, we would hope that the board would see fit to grant these variances. Thank you. Uh, I think we should go to the conference to discuss this. A couple of things before, yes. I guess, uh, before we go to the conference. Say, like, I'm not really comfortable with the parking. I'm gonna, and before we go into the conference, say if we, we are not comfortable with the parking and we will not either add more parking to it or reduce the intensity, do you guys have any idea of how you guys would make that happen I would need an opportunity to consult with my uh, client and witnesses to answer that question if I may have that opportunity mr. chairman sure Could I ask Mr. Shaw a question now? We have, I can ask it yet. No, let me change the uh, okay. CD on this. I'm going to change sure. the CD.